Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is one of the one day landscape job videos. I think this will be the third one that goes up on the channel. I did one in the fall last year and then um, I did one at this exact same house last week moving some plants that were going to get too big to a fence that's behind the camera now uh, and, re and planting some more appropriate lower growing things on this front foundation. Uh, today I'm doing some things around the base of this deck uh, right here. This side of the deck is definitely going to be a lot sunnier than that side. So we're going to put some part shade things up here and some full sun things this way. I'm going to lay this out a few different ways. I probably have more pieces here than I need and show you a few different ways this could be laid out. Just keep in mind that um, you're, not, you're not going to like every little design that I do uh, in this series. And that's not the point of it. I'm not trying to show you the exact, same, the exact things you should plant. Everybody's gonna have different ideas. If I brought 50 landscape designers into this backyard today and I said, the customer wants super, super low maintenance. I only want 10 to 12 pieces on this, uh, uh, around this deck. I get 50 different plans. And uh, you, you know, if you're watching me right, as you're watching this, 10 of them you wouldn't like and 40 of them you'd probably love, but they'd all be different. We'd probably have 150 different plants to choose from from those 50 plants, from those 50 plans. So that's the, that's the way this goes. It's, some of it's subjective. When you're picking plants, <laughs> I have lots and lots of uh, single plant videos on this channel. Most of the plants you see going in on these jobs, I've done videos for. And I've got them in playlist by, the, by zone. Okay, so if you find yourself on the U.S. horticultural zone map and your zone, let's say you're in zone five, I think that's like negative 20 or something like that is your average low temperature in, uh, in, in zone five. Uh, I've got a playlist for all the plants that I've ever done that grow in your zone. So you don't have to sit through all the videos of all the plants that don't grow in your area. You can actually go to that playlist. And on the bottom of this particular video, I'm going to link the zone five playlist, zone six, seven, eight, and nine, and 10, I think, uh, pl zone playlist on the bottom of this video. So as you're picking through plants and thinking about how you, uh, the things you want to use in your yard, I actually have a tool that you can use that way. At some point in the future, I'm going to divide it even further and have like foundation plants for zone five and trees for zone five. But I think there's probably 400 varieties or something. So it's going to be a lot to go through, but probably will take me several days to do that. At some point that'll happen. But for now, at least they are in one, um, one little package where you can um, you watch the plants that are appropriate for your area. So I'm gonna just lay some pieces out here and then I'll walk through with the camera and show you, uh, show you what I'm thinking. So keep in mind, the main requirement here was that the plants be low maintenance. And I'm using these Utopia Plum U's on this part shade side of this deck. These get three to four feet tall. They're perfect for part shade condition like this and just wouldn't require very much maintenance at all. Uh, on the corner here, I have this October Magic Ruby Camellia. This is a fall blooming uh, Camellia Sasanqua. It'll end up reaching about the height of this rail over time, which will just be perfect for this corner. Extremely low maintenance, extremely slow growing. So uh, that's very helpful in uh, being low maintenance. I carried one of these uh, Utopia Plum U's over to this side. Uh, just to, um, I, I, so I like to carry something uh, a little further around, you know, a corner like that, just to make it look like it was tied together anyway. Then I have, uh, it's kind of transitions to more sun as we go this way, not early in the morning here, but later in the afternoon, it'll be super sunny here. And I've put three of these sunburst uh, Encore azaleas right here. This is one of the bicolor Encores right there with the pink and white. That's a super nice, uh, nice variety. And it'll bloom three times a year. After that, I. I've got uh, three of these Obsession Nandinas sitting here. I have these on the west side of my house and they absolutely uh, don't mind cooking at all. And all the new foliage on this plant is this uh, nice dark purple uh, right here. Mine look fantastic at the house right now. I've had these three in a little bit of shade so they haven't co colored up as much as they should have at this point. And then over here on what is gonna be a very sunny corner, I've got this white wedding uh, hydrangea right here that will uh, bloom with those uh, bright white flowers. And this is a variety that can be kept, you know, pretty small. We can keep this well below the, uh, the rail on the deck here, but it'll be super showy all summer. So here's a second layout here, and I believe this is the one I'm going to go with. These are Deer Dolores uh, hydrangeas. Uh, they're 
budded up right now to bloom. They're, these are ones that'll be pink or blue, depending on soil type. Uh, in and around the city of Raleigh, uh, where I'm at, we have uh, clay-based soils that are very acid-based. They're gonna be some shade of uh, blue for sure in our area. But there's two of those uh, right there. And then I rearranged these U's to put two here. Uh, and then I have the camellia in the same spot. And then I brought two of those U's around uh, this side of the deck. So it's basically mirrored uh, on both sides right there. I'm centered the three azaleas on the deck right here, the sunburst encore azaleas. And rather than use the Obsession Nandinas for this particular job, I'm gonna use these three uh, purple daydream loripetalum. I did a, a video on these. This is a dwarf loripetalum. You get in that two to three foot height range and that purple foliage uh, will look great with those pink and white flowers on those azaleas when they bloom and with the uh, white flowers on the, uh, on the uh, white wedding hydrangea that's going in on that corner. I'm going to plant these today uh, in the ground. Uh, I don't have to mix anything into the soil because there's some loose soil in these pots. These plants were uh, uh, actually uh, in the ground uh, at my garden center and I dug them out, repotted them. So there's some loose soil in the pots. So I don't need to add anything. Uh, normally you would see me edging this bed and then mulching everything. But the third video in this series uh, for, from this house is actually going to be a job in which I come in, do the edging here, and uh, do the edging back on that area right there and show you how uh, you know I edge beds and would refresh something. It's basically going to be a video on, on refreshing beds and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna leave this one uh, with the plants planted, uh, watered in well, and I'm gonna put a small amount of mulch around each one to hold the moisture in place. And then the, like I say, the next video will be basically how to refresh a landscape. One suggestion I would have when you go to buy plants, uh, I, I put all of these pieces in the truck, including those Obsession Nandinas, which I'm you know, not actually using on this job. I love this plant, but I'm, I, I thought those Purple Daydream Laura Petalum uh, looked better in this particular instance right there. Um, when you go to pick out plants, uh, you know, take a photo of the space of this deck or the measurements of this deck and you know, lay them out on the ground. Any garden center you go to or your box store or wherever you're buying your plants will allow you to gather them up on a cart and then you know, lay them out and you can just do several different layouts like I just did, or I just only did two, but you could do as many as you want. Uh, usually parking places are about 10 feet wide if they have parking places you know, in, in their parking lot or whatever where you can you know, get some sort of measurement uh, to work off of and just keep laying them out until it's something uh, that, that works for you. And then, you know, and then buy those appropriate plants rather than bring them home and, you know, and then having to return them or, or, or whatever. But it, that would, that's one way. And I encourage that at my garden center. Like I say, the parking places in my parking lot were 10 feet wide. So if you know how wide your foundation is or how wide your deck is or the length, of, the length that you're screening or whatever you're working with, uh, it's pretty easy to lay them out and you can just keep, you know, keep switching them out, keep changing them. Uh, and uh, until you get what you're uh, looking for. Don't buy everything in full bloom. Uh, this time of year in the spring and April, it's really easy to go into a garden center and find uh, you know, 10 items in bloom and put them in the truck or the car and go home and plant them. But keep in mind, anything blooming in mid-April is probably just a spring flowering thing, which are great. You want spring flowering things, but it's also nice to make sure, like that white wedding hydrangea is not gonna bloom until the summer. Uh, those purple daydream laura petalum, they bloom spring and fall, but they keep the color, you know, the, the year round. These encores are going to bloom multiple times, including the spring. Uh, those hydrangeas are going to be, uh, those uh, dear Dolores hydrangeas, that's a summer flowering or late spring and into summer. And it's a remontant variety, so it'll bloom right till the fall. And then I've got this camellia over here that's a fall blooming camellia. So other than the dead of winter, um, and even in the dead of winter, I'm at least going to have some foliage interest. Uh, on this on this foundation. Keep that in mind. You know, don't go load up 10 things that are in full flower at the same time. You can if you want to, but keep in mind, you're gonna have a very short window where you actually have flower, flowering things or interesting things. Okay, I'm gonna stick these in the ground. Uh, I'm not gonna show you planting in every one of these videos, but if you watch each of these videos uh, and then put together that knowledge, hopefully you'll see planting, edging, mulching, uh, plant layout, all of those things. Uh, in, in the whole of all the videos. So I think this has turned out terrific. These hydrangeas look great here. 
Uh, that's Deer Dolores Hydrangea. Again, these are Utopia Plum Us. Uh, this uh, October Magic Ruby Camellia is just a perfect piece for this corner and will bloom at a time when nothing else is blooming. A couple more of these uh, Plum Us here. The three Sunburst Encore Azaleas are there. The uh, Purple Daydream Laura Petalum are in that cluster there. And then this Sun Loving uh, White Wedding Hydrangea Paniculata. And you can see the sun is now climbing its way in this direction. I had to get started on this job super early in the morning to, or uh, it'll be blasted. This corner of this deck over here will be blasted uh, by mid to late morning and the rest of the day. There is a tree a little, a little further up I'll show you right here that I think will offer it some shade after maybe three uh, in the afternoon, something like that. But I, overall, I think this turned out great. Keep in mind again, uh, this uh, I just mulched around each plant with some, these are just pine bark mini nuggets that I had in bags. And uh, I'm just trying to uh, uh, keep them moist and in, in between uh, jobs that I'm doing here. The next job you'll see at this spot will be edging all of these new beds, uh, mulching them, uh, and uh, just kind of neatening up. I think I'll call that one uh, a one day spring cleanup or something something to that effect but i wanted to save that part of the job for uh for that video but again thank you very much for uh watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel because i have a lot of upcoming content just like this mm -hmm.